Hello everybody, it's Lena here. How are you all doing? For those who don't know me yet, I, well, I'm Len, but also known as Iku from Iku Tree. I'm an illustrator, well, hobbyist trying to make it as a professional illustrator. I'm also a filmmaker on YouTube. Uh, what else? I stream, I write. Anyway, I do a lot of creative things. So welcome to my channel, whether you're returning or new here. Welcome to my very first Inktober. This is the second part of the Inktober series. I was considering doing a one video per week, but I thought it would be a little redundant. So here I am, putting everything, condensing everything into one video as much as I can so it's not too long for you guys and making a voiceover. I'm not very good at voiceovers, guys. I ramble a lot. So the point here was to talk you through how I experienced my very first Inktober while you watch the time lapse of me drawing. If you want more information about what I'm drawing, everything is on my Instagram under each post. I explain why I chose that particular uh, anime or manga for the random draw. Uh, speaking of random draws, I haven't properly introduced the concept. So every October, every year, there's an official Inktober prompt that invites all creatives, uh, amateurs, hobbyists, you know, professionals to draw every day one piece of art with ink as a medium, any type of ink. I think this year you could even do it digitally. Um, but I took the opportunity to do it with traditional ink, which I had never really done before. I don't know anything about ink, so this was a whole new challenge for me. So every day there's a new word to work around as a theme, and I added the random draw to my Inktober to one, challenge myself, but also help me imagine a full illustration, which was one of the goals I had for this Inktober, is to make one full illustration every day, thinking about composition and learning how to ink because I am very fond of pencil sketches. I really like the texture, I love how you can create width and oh, I don't know how to explain it but I really love pencil drawings as well as digital art. Those are the two things I do most. But I really love working with the texture of pencils. Um, so ink was really frustrating for me at first, having to erase everything and then have to figure out line weight. Uh, it was really difficult and creating compositions, not as easy as I imagined it to be. Also, I know I'm a perfectionist, so even if these drawings are sped up and seem like they're only a handful of hours, it mostly took me an entire day to get through these drawings, especially for the initial sketch. I really struggled, I wanted things to be perfect, I wanted my anatomy to be coherent, because I do have a few shortcomings when it comes to anatomy, so I was like, if I'm going to show this to the world, the anatomy has to be somewhat good, so I really got into my own head a lot during <laughs> during Inktober and I wish I would have enjoyed the journey more but I know myself I'm always putting pressure and stressing about things so I knew it was gonna be part of the of Inktober stressing and like putting myself down and feeling not good enough but I I went through it and I'm glad I did. I, I finished late, but I finished it and I'm someone who really struggles to finish things because I have so much self-doubt and at one point I'm always thinking, what's the point? So yeah, rambling again, but <laughs> that was my, those were my goals for this Inktober. So for the random draw, as you may have read on my Instagram, if you're following me, if not, please follow me on Instagram and Twitter. It's the best way to connect with me, as well as the comments on YouTube. And I would really love to see you guys across various platforms so we could really communicate with one another. I love meeting new people, sharing opinions, speaking to you guys, recognizing you guys, especially for the ones who come on my Twitch stream. It's so much fun to see you guys across more than one platform and also it really does help me so if you guys want to support me in ways that aren't financial follow me on social media share comment like every little helps in advance thank you so much guys so back to the random draw the anime and the manga i put in my little cup thing 
are either uh, from my teenage years, some anime and manga that have really stuck through me throughout the years have inspired my art, have influenced my storytelling and my art style, whereas others are some that I have discovered throughout the year, mainly through the summer season where many awesome uh, anime were released. And I just wanted to share them with you guys because they were so much fun to watch and they were still fresh in my head. So that's how it really influenced my choice. I did go back and forth a lot. There are some things that I wish I could have put in there and maybe now with a bit more hindsight, things that maybe should not have been in there though honestly and ultimately no regrets when it comes to what I had to draw. It's just that I feel like maybe some should have been in there more than others. Maybe, I don't know. The one thing I didn't explain and that comes to mind right now as I'm watching the footage Also guys, this is not in the right order in which I did these I did go, I did do a lot of back and forth having missed some days and you know, life happens So if you want to see the correct order in which I did things during Inktober I think the way I published them on Instagram is the way I ended up drawing them, I think. But what I was saying is that the reason I chose manga and anime as a main theme is that simply enough it's what inspired me when I was a teenager to really do art. And when I went to art school, and there was a whole debate on Twitter about this recently, when I went to art school the anime genre, the manga genre, was really looked down upon, like frowned upon. I'm um, not sure why exactly, but my style really changed when I went to art school. I kind of have to had to give that up. So I guess that with Inktober, I'm kind of celebrating that part of me that I had to put away for so long. And that I still enjoy drawing even though I have grown and I have had many outside influences and I've experimented with my style. And I still don't think I have a very set style. I like to I like to experiment still. I like to I'm still finding myself. But yeah, that was the simple reason for why I chose manga and anime as a theme in my random draw. So this is week two coming to an end and with it the realization that I am hitting a wall and I'm getting, I'm falling behind. I was panicking and I was starting, like I said, starting to hit a wall and getting a little bit, going a little crazy and getting a little tired and uh, maybe coming back down to earth with like the realization that hey this well, I knew it wasn't gonna be easy, but this is gonna be much harder mentally than I thought. Yeah, I had a few meltdowns um, between at the end of the second week and beginning of the third week, I think. Oh, you f***ing sh**, sh**, f sh this camera and you f***ing sh**, sh I think I started getting back into a good rhythm and a good state of motivation during the third week, I would say, where I felt calmer and I started getting into a good habit of starting as early as I could because that's when my creativity was at its best. And then in the afternoon, I focused on inking, which was more technical and I could put like maybe a podcast or a movie in the background and just let my hand move. And I also was getting used to the inking. It wasn't such a big surprise every time I erased the pencil and realized that oh there's like no flow, no line weight, I'm gonna have to figure out how to add that and towards the end I remember that I was actually starting to add the the line weight as I went with the first round of inking so it made my job a little lighter but that was towards maybe the very end of it. I remember a few times during week three, I think towards the end, I had a few more meltdowns. I remember a few times where I just had to go outside and just walk it off. I remember walking for an hour one day just around and around the block and just trying to calm myself because what one thing I realized during Inktober is that it gave me such anxiety. Not the drawing part, but 
my own mind was giving me so much anxiety like am i doing this right am i doing it does it look good are people going to like it oh yeah i actually didn't mention that that one of one obvious goal of doing october was hoping to reach more people might reach a bigger audience and i didn't gain any followers uh they came and they went like follow and follow and that was really frustrating for me and it, i know it's silly but for someone who's trying to transition from hobbyist to professional, it was really discouraging. Um, especially, I work from home and I'm by myself a lot without other artists around me. So my source of motivation, my support group was was basically myself and I had to find inspiration looking at other people doing Inktober and encouraging them and them sometimes encouraging me and it was very isolating in the end so if you're thinking of doing Inktober next year or any type of creative marathon that is like Inktober I think right now there's November or something going on which I'm not taking part of at all uh, but you need you need good circumstances, you need a good balance and I just got so invested into Inktober that I was sure I was going out to get some fresh air like walking around the block and trying to like get my mind to work but I was so in my head with the self-doubt and like I said the perfectionism again and uh, wanting to, to for other people to like what I did and like putting the fate of my future and my creative career onto this this month uh, it was too much it was it wasn't good for my mind I feel like I'm complaining a lot but this is this is what I experienced I experienced a lot of anxiety more than I felt in a long time with uh, with this experience and that's what I want to call it it's an experience it was a journey uh, like I said before, I, w I wish I would have enjoyed the journey a little more, but again, like I said, I know myself. I always do this to myself. It's so frustrating. I think I got better maybe over the years, but I'm always putting so much pressure on myself. Um, I hope I'm not rambling too much. I was hoping to talk more about the anime and manga that I drew each day, but it's impossible for me to follow the flow of this uh, <laughs> of this video. I'm not good at voiceovers, guys, and uh, yeah, with the with this the the time lapse, it's really hard for me to focus and think about what I want to say at the same time. But yeah, I know for every drawing on which one I struggled, on which one I had a bad day or a really good day. I remember what I learned. I'll talk about that in a minute. But yeah, this is. A really good video diary of my month of October because I know that maybe next year I'll be thinking hey I can do this again it wasn't so bad last year but yeah future you could come back and watch this video in a year and remember watching each drawing and remember how much of a struggle it was some days just to get the initial sketch yeah So this was week three finishing with banana fish, which was a struggle day. I remember that specifically that I struggled with the anatomy of, of Ash so much. <laughs> So the way I went at it each day for Inktober was that I would already have drawn my my theme, my anime, the day before so I, I had a bit of time to think about my composition. If I had an idea straight away, I would draw the thumbnail as you see at the beginning of each 
a little segment. I do a little thumbnail, not very uh, advanced. I saw other artists making like incredible thumbnails. I'm, I don't have the patience for that. I would just do a little idea of how things would sit on the page. And then I prepare my paper and then start with the initial sketch. For some sketches, I was really inspired and I pushed the sketch a little too much for a piece that is supposed to be inked and then erased. For others, I struggled, I erased, I started over. Some end pieces look nothing like the thumbnail. Uh, if you look really closely, you'll, it, you'll be able to find maybe two or three where I could just completely change the composition on the fly while I was sketching because I couldn't figure out how to make it work. And there are a few you, I don't think it happened too much, but it was yeah, it was a rare occurrence where um, I barely needed to to sketch anything on the paper and it almost directly went into inking after maybe the first hour of sketching. So sketching, inking, and then I would erase my sketch and start with the the rest of the inking where I was all over the place. I would never do it twice the same way. It was always different. I was always experimenting, always figuring things out. Uh, for some, I did some really thick line art. For some, I did some really thin line art and I really hated that. For example, the one with the bleach. I used the thinnest pen and it gave me so much more work afterwards and uh, I'm not that satisfied with the end result, to be honest. But again, perfectionism, self-doubt, all of the above. Not good for an artist, I'm really working on that. But uh, yeah, that was my process, basically. I think I'm not missing anything. Uh, one thing, I don't know why I, I started with that, but I wanted to add a touch of pink to every single piece, even if it's like a tiny dot of pink. Um, I only have one Copic, is it Copic or Copic? Copic <laughs> marker, which is the pink one. So maybe that's the reason why. And also my Ecotree brand is a lot of pink as the main color. So maybe that was my idea behind it. I'm not entirely sure, but every single piece has a pink dot on it. Once the art is done, I'd scan it, clean it up on Photoshop because my scanner isn't that good. And also with the uh, white pen that I used as uh, my eraser I suppose. It would still show up on the scan version so I had to clean it up a little bit and then post it to Instagram and Twitter and to my Insta stories and uh, hope to get a bit of attention. <laughs> uh, I haven't even mentioned the tools yet but I think that's obvious by now. I was mainly using uh, ink pens that I already had before. I didn't want to have to buy anything so the only thing I bought for Inktober was the white pen which I didn't have and thank goodness I did that. By the end of Inktober, you'll see at the very end of the video, I had run out of almost everything. All my uh, thicker pens had run out of ink from using it so much so I had to use some really old like liquid uh, drawing ink from my school days. Thank goodness for that because I would have not been able to finish Inktober without it. It would have just been very bare and white without it. My eraser kind of took a beating, it's almost dead, and uh, the my, my pencil, I was down to my last piece of lead. Couldn't afford to buy another pack, so I was really trying to save the last of it, trying not to drop my pen, which is something I unfortunately do a lot, but yeah. Yada yada. What are the things I learned from Inktober? I've realized how slow I am, not in a bad way, but also kind of in a bad way, slow I am at making compositions. Even though I was making them every day, I don't feel I necessarily got faster at it, just mainly because I kept redrawing things and fussing over little details and going back and forth and you know like doubting myself constantly same with the inking process i feel like instead of having fun and experimenting and being like oh this isn't this didn't work out that's too bad i was just like i was very shy and i was afraid of making mistakes and yeah that's something i realized i my flagrant self-doubt and perfectionism was sort of made even more clear to me during during this and I kept focusing on my shortcomings on especially anatomy wise and I spent a lot of my my school days at art school uh, with people telling me that my my art was really stiff and with 
the pressure of being told where I felt my art getting stiffer again. I was like, no, I'm going back, I'm reverting, I'm, I'm moving backwards instead of forwards. And <laughs> that combined with the whole Instagram debacle of followers coming in and coming out just felt like I was not, I, I felt like I wasn't doing good enough. Oh my God, Iku, why are you doing this to yourself? Um, so yeah, I realized a few of my shortcomings and I shouldn't even call them shortcomings It's just like it's part of the process. It's part of the journey You're like, oh, I realized that I'm not really good at drawing hands. So you should go draw hands for a few days Duh What I also realized was that I have a tendency of really getting tunnel vision with these kind of things like when I know there's an end goal I like try to run towards it and I, I really burnt myself out, not like proper burnout, but I really, I tried to do everything at once. I was like, yeah, I can, I can do Inktober. I can edit videos at the same time. I can write articles at the same time. I can still have a life as well as doing a full illustration every day. And yeah, that did not happen. I realized that very quickly after the first week where I, I edited a video that week, I tried to write an article and I also had like a concert I think that weekend or maybe the weekend after and I quickly realized that yet yeah, this is not gonna happen so I kind of overcorrected myself and only focused on Inktober and um, that wasn't good either because I completely isolated myself and you'll see towards like the end, I am in my apartment, which is really cold, which is why I'm wrapped in a blanket and have a hot water bottle. And I'm always wearing that same big jumper over my over my outfit of the day, always like cocooning almost just to focus on Inktober. And I just felt so isolated. It was not good for my mental health. So I learned how not to do Inktober this year, I feel like. Uh, in a sense, because the result, I'm very happy to have 31 illustrations I have I've drawn every day for a month, like full on illustrations in different styles with different inspirations and different themes and I've experimented with ink. So I hope there's something of value to what I said because I feel like as slightly all over the place and uh, this is why I don't usually do voiceovers. I have a feeling that there is so much I still need to say. As you've seen, all my original art is on sale right now on my Etsy store, which I've just opened. I will be relaunching my Patreon soon, but if you guys don't want or aren't able to support me in that way, every little helps. If you like this video, if you share this video, if you follow me on Instagram or on Twitter, if you send me messages, if you like my posts, if you comment on my posts, I'm serious guys, every little helps. I'm always so happy to receive a comment. I'm like, yes, somebody has seen my art. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I've probably missed out so many things in this video, so just, just let me know guys, I, I'll be happy to answer and reply and to connect with you. So I'll word you all and uh, talk very soon guys. Bye!